Imagine hovering above one of the busiest, most hardworking cities on Earth, and the first thing you see is the Shanghai Tower, a masterpiece that is very aptly the symbol of Chinese architecture brilliance. With its sleek and twisting silhouette, this stunning Godzilla huge building is among the only four mega-tall skyscrapers in the world. But beneath this bait is a truth not many know. What the world now calls China's golden child is in reality China's biggest failed project, and here's why. Well, back in 1993, when China was transforming its soil into the epicenter of trade, the Chinese city runners saw a dream to make something legendary. Thanks to the rapidly evolving economic status, Shanghai needed more office space to declare itself as the center and the financial capital of China on the global stage. So, a plan was hatched to build a trio of jaw-dropping super-tall skyscrapers. The first one, called the Jin Mao Building, started this trio in 1999. Almost 10 years later, the Shanghai World Financial Center joined the meeting in the city skyline. But the real star of the show was always meant to be the Shanghai Tower. The Shanghai Tower, funded mostly by the city government and backed by a group of state-owned developers, began its 2.4 billion construction journey in 2008. Skipping ahead 8 years and 128 stories, this twisting marvel was finally done, grabbing the world's attention with its unique design and colossal size. Now, I am sure if you have a thing for architecture, you would truly understand the hype about this artistic beauty. Nevertheless, this skyscraper superblock became one of the busiest places on Earth. Covering over a million square meters, everyone expected this latest addition to boost the country's economy. It's also fair to say, the USA was in hot water after Shanghai dropped this architectural and economic marvel. For a quick second, the debate was shifted from discussing its making to actually fearing if it would replace New York. Lucky for the states, none of that really happened. Now, shifting our gaze from the political tension to the real deal. Right in the heart of Shanghai's Lujiazui Financial District, this area of magnificent buildings transformed from a flatland into a financial powerhouse. The once silent skyline was now expected to proudly showcase architectural wonders and economic prowess. But did you know that even its engineering is worth discussing? To anchor and secure the tower, China's trusted engineers installed 980 underground pylons, some of which extended down as far as 86 meters. Not just this, to build the core, which is quite self-explanatory, the most important part of this construction, for they used a slip-forming technique, allowing them to pour and cure concrete continuously. Fact to be noted, that the impressive rigmarole of pouring down concrete for 63 straight hours for the foundation truly made the task of boosting the tower's growth rapid, with a new floor added roughly every four hours. The entire plan seemed too hypothetical to be true, but it happened, and it happened in all its might. But it all came crashing down in just a moment. Since its mega opening in 2016, the Shanghai Tower started facing a variety of challenges, including an unexpected and unplanned low occupancy rate, which appeared to the rest of the world to be a nightmare. I mean, sure, it's just a building, but mind you, it wasn't made as a tourist attraction. China truly wanted the West to know of its powers, and with such an unanticipated blunder, they had to bear the weight of disgrace. Sure, the Shanghai Tower had tried to spread its wings with high hopes, but it only ever met with the devastating reality of an extremely low occupancy rate. To paint a more detailed picture, the tower was half empty till 2018, a solid two years after the gates to this big symbol of prosperity and global dominance were opened. What made matters worse was how only 30% of the total local companies who decided to give it a shot stayed. This was quite a stunner because contrary to how the investors had envisioned, no multinational corporations knocked on their doors, and no one was interested in making the Shanghai Towers their home. Why? Well, there are various reasons for this. Well, to begin with, Shanghai Tower faced a lot of trouble because of complicated rules and worries about safeties from the local fire department. These worries were mainly about how high the building was and whether or not it's possible to rescue people if things go down. Because of this hesitation, it took a long time to get the green light for fire safety. And while this battle between the investors and the bureaucrats was going on, the tower was losing money. Its debts piled up to a huge 1.5 billion, making things really tough to sustain and develop in this tall standing wonder. But that wasn't all. There was another surprising problem, the building's complicated design. You see, 
The outer walls of this tower were made of glass and were supposed to move with the wind, but this fancy design made the inside layout extremely messed up. Try to imagine people renting space in the building but not being able to use half of it because the floors weren't set up properly. That is exactly what was wrong with the interior. It's more like buying a whole pizza and finding out you only get to eat half of it. Would that be fair? Clearly not. Gradually, as the sun went down in Shanghai, something became very clear. Not many companies were in the tower. Another big reason for this struggle was the Day Hotel, a luxury hotel that was taken forever to open. It was a dream on hold for many years. As of 2024, the Jay Hotel is home to 165 rooms, with 34 of them being fancy suites. These cozy spaces are situated on floors 86 to 98 and range in size from 61 to 380 square meters, offering some of the tallest and roomiest choices in Shanghai. It seems great. Who knows how splendid you feel here? But clearly, the delay made people lose interest in this. But amid all of these problems, the Shanghai Tower had a different side to it too. It cares a lot about being kind to the environment. You will be surprised to know it uses over 40 ways to save energy. Just think about 200 wind turbines spinning around gracefully, given 10% of the tower's power. And there was more. Special glass walls and a system to reuse rainwater, all these were to make sure the tower was friendly to the environment. The tower's LEED Platinum certification is also a mark of its commitment to sustainability, which turns out to be an important part of its commercial strategy. Thinking of strategy, the owner started to target or much rather attract investors seeking to invest in lower maintenance and energy costs for super tall buildings. As you go up the tower, you will see how big a deal sustainability is here. When turbines catch high up winds to make power, and there's a system that reuses rainwater for heating and cooling. The fancy double glare glass windows aren't just for looks, they're great for saving energy. Everyone in their same mind thought investors would be drawn to the tower's green credentials, but it didn't happen. Despite being packed with interesting features like wind turbines and rainwater recycling, the Shanghai Tower struggled to find enough people to rent spaces, especially when things got tough economically in China. Even the International Monetary Fund had doubts about whether it was a good idea to build such an expensive tower that wasn't getting many tenants. Surely, these reasons are enough to understand why experts call this a miserably failed project. However, every cloud has a silver lining. Even though the tower has had a hard time getting businesses to rent its spaces because of economic problems, and it's been tough to get tenants to agree to pay higher rents when everyone's looking for cheaper deals, the Shanghai Tower is still standing strong. Its journey is far from finished. This amazing building, setting new records and changing how cities look, tell the story of how China's cities have grown. The background story of this tower reflects the ever-changing landscape of modern cities and the pursuit of progress. Anything can happen anytime. If you found this video of the Shanghai Tower story interesting, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more fascinating insights. Share your thoughts in the comments below. Have you ever visited the Shanghai Tower or any other iconic skyscrapers? What's your take on its struggles and achievements? Thanks for coming along on this ride through the amazing ups and surprising downs of the Shanghai Tower. Stay curious and keep discovering the wonders out there.